is a message of um, uh, protest from Richard McLean, Dr. Richard McLean, to the Prime Minister of Australia and all federal parliamentarians and government officials. It is also to my friends and family and um, the people that have been um, contaminated via the libel and slander that has destroyed me and caused me enormous, enormous detriment and further has character assassinated me. Tomorrow or today, I have been approached by the police and also the um, Saltwater Clinic Community Mental Health Team for a community treatment order. That is for me to be incarcerated. They wanted me to go with them today um, to be incarcerated for the second unnecessary time. I am not insane. I am not unwell. I have been persecuted by, by a vile victimization that has um, seen me the unwitting centre of a victimization that is so ungodly it will curl your hair. It is also the result of a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. This is illegal in our country. I am a person who cannot report rape, hi Crystal, rape, murder, tax fraud, sexual and financial coercion, the theft of my phone, the theft of my car, a conspiracy to avert the course of justice, or any crime whatsoever to any police person anywhere, anytime. I'm also a person who has not been able to access litigation, which is a condition that the government signed um, as a, um, oh, what do you call it? I can't remember sometimes. It's a um, to do with the Convention of Human Rights of People with a Disability. I identify or did identify with one label of disability, schizophrenia, in um, 2002 or something when I wrote it a human rights award winning book and became an advocate for 25 plus years out of altruism to save suffering of other people by sharing a courageous story. Um, I wish to say that um, what is happening is abhorrent. I have been a victim that is so successfully framed and ostracized, neglected and isolated me that I am now easily exploited um, via my nature of explaining with um, candor um, things about myself that are ingrained prejudices within society already. I am easy to exploit. Why does the government want to exploit me? Because I know too much. And it happened small and I had to reverse engineer this abhorrent um, victimization which has caused me millions of dollars in detriment and also um, was aided and abetted my death um, for years uh, that finally happened inside a hospital where I suicided. I've been, I've been said I'm an extortionist and kill myself for fun. How preposterous. I had proven beyond reasonable doubt, as is the case now, that not one person stands on my side and not one person opposed that suicide. And in fact, the Hospital Freedom of Information says that it was a fatal injury and a lethal attempt. This is because 
of a systemic government oppression that occurred over years because I was a target and I was easily exploitable and my former partner, an ASIO employee, hi Crystal, owes me about half a million dollars from a legitimate relationship in which we were engaged. I also am banned as a whistleblower. Oh, first of all, the government covered up that um, suicide as innocuous and nothing to see, despite it contravening my human rights, despite me not being able to get a lawyer, which contravenes the human rights of people with a disability that is ratified by this government in 2008. I'm over it. I want to avoid my incarceration tomorrow because of a situation whereby I am a political prisoner. I have tried my best to get a lawyer. I have tried my best to go to police. I have tried to report crimes. I have tried to advocate for myself when not one person in this world would. I stuck up for people for 25 plus years out of altruism and the kindness of my own heart and my character should never be characterised as an extortionist or a person who seeks attention or um, even unwell. It is extremely clear by the evidence at killing.info that this systemic oppression has had legs over years and it has oppressed me and caused me millions of dollars in detriment. I currently have no, uh, I'm squatting in this home. I am a political prisoner. I am scapegoated and I am character assassinated. So I cannot be a whistleblower with any of these crimes at IBAC, at APRA, at ASIC, or the Commonwealth Ombudsman. I would like to say that apart from my impending incarceration tomorrow, from which I am clearly, clearly not unwell, it is a condition of the system to not acknowledge my justice issues and to demonise me as someone who is unwell when it is a political game to silence my voice in opposition to um, me blowing the whistle on people in positions of power, money and privilege and reputation. I wish to say, um, what was I going to say next, that um, all public officials and all people in positions of public office have a responsibility and an obligation to follow through to human rights law, which is ingrained in the constitution of this country. I approve beyond reasonable doubt that this systemic government oppression, which actually led to my fatality and further, um, I was then rejected from the hospital unethically. No one would stand up for me and the government condoned it as innocuous and nothing to see. That is an abhorrent way to um, culturally and systemically via attacks of proxy on one particular person, which is me, and attack him by systemic government institutions for years again and again is an abhorrent victimization 
and a reason why I will ask the public for help and I demand that I be released from the persecution of being incarcerated tomorrow. They have got a community treatment order and came here with police and told me I was unwell. What would they know? They rejected me from the hospital and in the 10 months following, I saw a psychiatrist only twice. In the whole year since my suicide attempt, which was deemed fatal, the result of government oppression, which in fact was then whitewashed by the government, and I was character framed and victim blamed as some kind of extortionist or criminal um, mastermind. Hey, Crystal, what have you got? Don't rip that up. Oh, she's got the toilet paper, sorry. <clears throat> um, look, um, this, this oppression has been brutal and I, I refuse to be incarcerated by police who will not take my reports on injustices. I have been rendered an innocuous, vagrant, a refugee in my own country with whistleblower rights in a democracy. I can't get a lawyer. I can't go to police. Where do I go to get justice? Currently, I have not enough medication. I have not enough food. This is a method to make me unwell. Um, they say rent stress is 30% of your wage. I receive just over $700 a fortnight on the disability support pension. My rent is $375 a week. For a whole year, I haven't even been able afford to exist. This is despite the systemic oppression which has gone on for years and years and years. It is ingrained in the already existing prejudices and discrimination of human nature, which makes me easy to exploit. And it's easy to damn me as either a rapist, a pedophile, a dog fucker, a, um, an extortionist, whatever you want to add, I don't care. Add to it. The public has now become private and the private has now become public and artography is a way, an arts-based research in my life is art, in a way that it spirals inwards to the very inner person and then outwards to the very systemic processes and government um, foundations that relate to one another. What is happening right now is that I have been accosted and oppressed. I'll tell you what I'm owed. I am owed... You have no idea. I've been through so much. You can't kill me. I am not suicidal. I am not at risk. What is happening is that the government has refused to acknowledge me in any form whatsoever through government agencies. Just briefly, I've lost over one and a half million dollars at the Australian Human Rights Centre by Liz Lindbergh, um, overseen by the, the conspiracy. I won't call it conspiracy because that sounds like I'm paranoid, but I'll call it a movement to oppress me. That movement to oppress me saw me lose a million and a half dollars from AFCA. I mean, um, Australian Human Rights um, Commission. Because they free kicked a um, discrimination case to the other team. How do I know that the government was involved? Because I went to the company directly myself and got a small atonement for um, a, a non um, admitting fault, um, 
resolution, which was what was supposed to happen at the Australian Human Rights Centre. In addition to that, it goes back years. My former partner was... I feel sorry for him because he's been through a rough life, but he's protecting his money. There is absolutely, unequivocally, not a doubt we were together for five years. And there is no doubt that he worked for ASIO. And there is no doubt that he was feathering his own nest on hundreds of thousands of dollars a year whilst I spent my nest egg on him and keeping up with the Joneses. Everyone thought it was great that Steve and I were together, and to be fair, there were good times. However, an equitable and legal separation was necessary. I got a hitman threatened on me. He stole my car. Um, he admitted to being present at a murder. He made money um, selling cocaine. He bought a house with that. While I was with him, I told him to get rid of that house. It was bad energy. He did for $1.1 million and invested it in an offshore tax haven out of greed. Um, now, this is the same thing by which he's protecting his money now. He owes me half a million dollars. I would never have to have gone through vagrancy or any of this oppression. Maybe had not that kingpin and his um, influence and his evil way of sending out narcissistic monkeys by proxy attack to attack me when friends deceive you, when they say Steve's a nice bloke. When they say, oh, don't get Steve for his super, you wouldn't do that. What else have I got to lose? I threatened Steve because um, I wanted an atonement. That was when I was first hospitalised. And I, 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 I said that he was present. And, and, and these justice issues, there was a case with a, um, uh, a, a legitimate case with a GP and it was covered up evidence that is permissible in a court through the Surveillance Act 1999 in Victoria and it was covered up by many many agencies and I was set up to fail again and again and again and again and again. This was done via the Health Complaints Commissioner, by APRA, by NHPOPC, by the police, by ABAC, by the Victorian Inspectorate and by the Ombudsman and the Federal Ombudsman. All of those institutions silenced that evidence. That lawyer, his lawyer, and I've never had a lawyer, framed me as an extortionist. This is abhorrent. The day I survived after my suicide attempt, my mother said, yeah, but you recorded that, doctor. There was no compassion. It was a victim blaming game. Now, at the same time, in my defense, I was gifted $100,000. Um, the person said it was a mistake. So I gave it back. I have never acted out of money. I have never acted out of greed. I have been an altruistic human rights awarded person who has always used his position of privilege to help people more marginalised than himself. I have spoken hundreds of times. I have spoken in Parliament. I have spoken in Montreal. I have um, written a human rights award winning book for which I talked about drugs, sex, rock and roll. It was a youthful book. There was regretful sex. And that's the thing. Oh, now I'm um, framed as a rapist. It was consensual sex. Um, it was regrettable. But that's life. I don't wear that. And you know what else I don't wear? I don't wear the shame of the sexual abuse suffered to me by someone close to my house.
when I was young. I took that case to um, the police and I took that case to a Geelong magistrate um, who, and obviously I'd suffered great distress. And out of respect for my predator, I didn't name him not to ruin his life. That's how compassionate I am. Now, it was revealed to me by Vocat that it wasn't a crime to be a kiddie fiddler to a boy in the, that year when I was a child. But it was for a girl. So I got kicked out. They told me I was doomed to fail. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds to me like um, I'd been framed as an extortionist and I was just trying to get money. That's what that sounds like. That sounds like any government agency that had come before me, such as all the ones mentioned before, and the prior VOCAT case of me being violently beaten up and hospitalised with broken bones and stitches for um, protecting a member of the public, the VOCAT case was pinned on me. Despite there being video evidence, the police had. I wanted my freedom of information from police so I could simply exonerate myself from the crime. Of course that didn't happen because the movement is cooked against me. A conspiracy to pervert the course of justice is illegal. A systemic, not only personal, but systemic victimization on such an ungodly scale is utterly abhorrent. I'm not the most easy person to get on with sometimes, but on my own, just with my dog, I know exactly what's going on. When I was incarcerated the first time, when I threatened my former partner, who I have evidence of, um, you know, when I said he was present in the murder and everything, and he said, where's your evidence? I'm going to dub you into your um, thing. He sent me an email. Um, now, I was, sure, I was upset. That's because I'd suffered great detriment and I'd been set up to fail, even though I was a non-acknowledged adult survivor of sexual abuse and I'd been a psychiatric survivor, which I have reframed via a doctorate study that disables the label of schizophrenia and looks at it through a holistic shamanic model. I passed. The people that are locking me up and the people that oppress me are simply pawns of a system that are paid by the man, by the government, to um, further oppress me. These people have no agency of free will and thought. They are bound by the constrictions of the government, unlike free thinkers and radicals like me. And they are cowards. People who act when they're being paid to oppress an already marginalised person for their prejudice of slander they've heard without even knowing me are cowards. I am not a coward. I'm courageous. I'm a fighter. I'm a freedom fighter. I'm a lover. I'm a decadent. And I'm also a human rights warrior. That is who I am. If you are unsure of that, go and have a look at richmclean.com.au and see the enormous amount of art, advocacy and creativity and the public um, traction that I have had in Parliament, in um, schools, 
in educational institutions, looking after um, the majority young people and marginalised people within the community. And I've done it from Melbourne to Sydney to Parliament House to Dubbo to Warrnambool to Montreal. I have been a local, state and federal advocate for a recovery-based focus for very many years. And I really didn't realise that the kindness and altruism that I was expressing was um, actually indoctrinating me more as a person who could be easily pathologised and easily excused as mad or, um, you know, whatever they want to pin me with. Easily exploitable. My message today is that I am not unwell. I am not mad. I am a unique individual who is neurodiverse with a brain injury. And I know what's going on. And I refuse to be locked up by and backed by police who won't take my reports of rape, murder, <laughs> the list goes on. That is abhorrent. It is abhorrent. I will not accept that a delay, deny, defer model of my compensation from the CDD scheme through Prime Minister and Cabinet, through Federal Minister, Finance Minister Birmingham, through um, the Attorney General, Michaelia Cash, through the Honourable um, Reynolds and other ministers, I refuse to accept that that will take some time. Because as of, I don't know how many years ago now, I'm worth millions of dollars on paper. I don't even want the money. I have death threats at this window. My computer is hacked. I am going to be incarcerated in a ward of the state permanently. And I'm going to have a crime pinned on me, I, I know, that I have not committed. I'm not insane. I am a victim of systemic government oppression that has already killed me and then covered it up. Further to my story before, I forgot to say, I lost one to two million dollars at AFCA and all public officials are bound to act reasonably and with care and with, within human dignity and rights. The Human Rights Charter. Every public official doesn't have any agency to act outside of those bounds. The people at the Australian Human Rights Centre, they willingly exploited me and turned away millions of dollars. Peter Goss and Tim Fisher and I can't remember their bosses, they, they willingly watched me um, suffer um, financially and become distressed and hospitalised and then suicide and then they um, they watched as I squirmed some more and then I called them out then two million dollars of my cases were dropped next Wednesday I can't remember the name it's the 24th today Sunday so 24 or whatever uh, of March 2022 I face the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. This is for my work cover compensation, which is probably now a TPD, considering I have very severe memory issues. And, um, but if it's not, it's just a work cover case, but it's taken a whole year. And I am expected to affront a lawyer at that institution under the AAT, whereby um, 
that the government has a 25 year experienced lawyer who is going to um, protect the government. And they're going to kick me in the head while I'm down. I don't even understand the legislation. This is against the signatory of human rights for people with a disability. I deserve an advocate, a lawyer. I, I have an advocate, but he refuses to step in for me. No one will step in for me. I have no food. The dog is hungry. After that suicide, I haven't had the human decency and dignity of one psychologist that entire time. Additionally, I was rejected from the whole of the hospital whatsoever. The hospital CEO, who I was the one who offered him the choice of choosing somewhere for a simple atonement that that tragedy happened, rejected me. Dave Stevenson, the CEO of Werribee Mercy Hospital, acted with a complicit immunity from the law when he kn knows fair dink and well that I can't go to the police, I can't be a whistleblower, and I can't get a lawyer, and I'm bereft of any prosperity whatsoever. He bade me to t um, sue him directly and personally for that terrible day that I might add was um, opposing um, my human dignity. It was more malpractice. It was misdiagnosis because it wasn't delusions of persecution. When I left that hospital, they had to admit that I knew exactly what was going on and I was grossly aware. I was neither psychotic nor delusional, and I am not either now. So summing up this half an hour statement, I want to say that the millions of dollars in detriment I owe, oh, that's right. So it's, sorry, it's, um, I'll lose $1.5 million on Tuesday, even though I've tried so hard to get a lawyer. I've tried so hard to use the law against the law. I am utterly, catastrophically, scapegoated, ostracized, neglected, and not one person in my life or the government will have the courage or the conviction or the compassion to cross the floor and help me with my very, very simple message to the government that you don't have to admit you did anything wrong. All I wanted that Federal Birmingham rejected with the delay, defy, delay, deny, defer model is a simple, basic wage. That is in light of and in replace of the many, many millions of dollars of detriment, including the 1.5 plus to $2 million I'm going to lose this Wednesday. And I predicted it. And it'll happen. Money's never been my currency. I like sex. I like being debaucherous. I like pushing the boundaries of what's possible. I like knowledge. I love my dog. And you suffer for people. You suffer for everyone. That's why I like dogs. The one thing in life is to find people worth suffering for, because you will suffer for every person you know. I do have love for people. I'm not a total isolated person, but I have little faith in the human condition and especially its systemic institutional organizations when I've been so heinously oppressed for so long. I request of the public today that before the CAT team come and lock me away tomorrow, potentially framing me as a further victim when I'm not unwell and I'm not at risk and I'm not suicidal.
This is a method of oppression. It is punishment. It is a brutal, another um, stick in the faggot of the conspiracy that has been banging me on the head for the years. I refuse to go to hospital when there's nothing wrong. It's not me that has the problem. Cade, my manager, apologizes for the hospital. He doesn't see justice. He sees illness. My family never saw justice. They see someone who embarrassed their family by being gay, a prior drug user, and um, having a very different perspective on the universe, which has um, basically embarrassed their, um, their model of how they present themselves to the world. I'm not going to say any dirt on them, but suffice to say... Toxic family scapegoating is a thing. And when this occurs, the scapegoat is an archetypal Jungian character who actually has a very, very unique and direct perspective. And often the ones, the lovemakers, the, um, the avant-garde, the revolutionaries, the sages and the prophets and the seers, historically, and the scapegoats, what happens to them? They kill them. Or they persecute them. I am a beautiful person. I have rights. I have dignity. Only because I carry on. I have suffered at the hands of small-mindedness and people who consciously choose um, to be contained and choose ignorance over expanding their minds. There is an old adage that says, those who couldn't see the music, or those who couldn't hear the music, thought the people who were dancing were insane. I'm a unique amazing, intelligent, and bloody forgetful person and spirit having a human experience. I'm deserving of dignity. I am under the government's charter, deserving of a home. I'm deserving of food. There is none in this house. I am deserving that the NDIA minister doesn't commit me to vagrancy. I'm deserving that people of public office don't oppress me and victimise me. I'm deserving that the Attorney General, Michaelia Cash, be called out for overseeing APRA, ASIC, APRA, Comcare, and legal and law reform and justice, and knowing that I pointed out corruption, and knowing that I'm a victim and knowing being tapped on the shoulder to send an innocuous letter not signed by anyone that tells me to go to the SANE helpline where my book was SANE's book of the year and to um, call SANE helpline because I'm distressed. I'm actually pretty calm. You know why? Because the truth sets you free. And I would rather be a courageous vagrant who stands in his own power and speaks truth to power than be deluded by simple it, uh, unintelligible um, choosing of um, deluding yourself of knowledge or being really filthy rich and having to protect that and do everything you can to protect that money. I think it's very sad. And out of all the money that I'm going to recoup 
from taking this government if they don't come to a conciliation without admitting they've done anything wrong to a conciliation for the detriment caused over years of oppression which led to my suicide and then was covered up again and the 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 reasons why I can't get a lawyer or go to the police and why I am perfectly and utterly sane but I'm being incarcerated tomorrow which I object to so this has to go out tonight this video I will use those millions and millions of dollars to give to the beautiful, the wonderful, the forgotten, the avant-garde, the light keepers, the, the keepers of the light, the um, people who challenge the status quo and who, by their implicit human nature, challenge our... Um, heteronormative society and um, the sexualities and the um, uh, our, our very nature the, the the ones that have have taught me the most you know how I've learned how I've educated I am going to give when I get detriment for all the, this for people who support me now I will get justice, even if I have to take the Prime Minister himself to the Federal Circuit Court or the Supreme Court of this country and the Finance Minister, Birmingham, and the NDIA Minister, Reynolds, and um, the Attorney General, and the whole systemic shebang of ASIC, APRA, um, ASIO, um, AGIS, and the Commonwealth Ombudsman, and every single public official that has a responsibility to act within the realm of human rights and not allowed out of that, but who have denied and deceived their privilege and thrown me to the wolves and broken the law and further that those people have been told a story of libel and slander that has made it easy for them or easier to exploit me and not cross the floor those people are cowards i'm going to give the money well, oh, first I ask for your support. Please support me so I can um, not go to hospital, so I can get um, a lawyer, and I, I can get um, my very human dignity met. I need a home. I need food. I need medication. I've got some cancers here. They haven't bothered to call me. That's because no one cares if I die. I care if I die, because it's not my time, obviously. The money that, um, or the atonement of um, conciliation that comes to me, I will be giving 60% of it away. I only need a simple life. I'd be quite happy in this simple house if it, if, if it weren't for the death threats at the front, if it weren't for the people yelling abuse, knocking on my door, if it weren't for my computer being hacked, and if it weren't for the loss of my friends and family who have all been exploited to easily kick me when I'm down, because Eric Clapton was right, no one wants you when you're down and out. But I reckon I'm a dead set legend. You mightn't think so, but I think so, and I don't care what you think. I'm going to give the money back to um, um, special underprivileged people like I always have, and that is 
even though it's a part of Melbourne Health, the um, Royal Children's Hospital Banksia Unit for um, for child and adolescent mental health. And in addition to that, promote the more holistic angle as well as a chemical one. My research and my PhD has showed me that all the doctors and all the shamans are all right and they're all wrong. It depends where you are. There is a spiritual element of it, of it. There is a science element of it. One cannot be without the other. And maths can be beautiful. So the other place I'm going to give it to is um, to the education of, um, of um, intersex and trans kids, especially. And the, the parents and education of those people and... Um, and to that um, agency. And I'll send this video to them too. The other people that I'm going to send to, so I'm to pick my nose. I've got a little cancer there too. Is um, um, Indigenous rights. This land was never ceded. And um, we stand on an ancient, ancient place. There is no denying we are at end stage late capitalism at the thin slice of the wedge of the Anthropocene. While I am here in this incarnation, in this body, this monkey suit, I will do my best, as I always have, to prevent suffering and to do it for the people who need it most. So I'm going to send this video out to the Prime Minister. I'm going to send it to Saltwater Clinic. Oh, they're having an email address. I'm going to send it to everyone. All the people that have oppressed me. All the agencies that have kicked the can down the line, delayed, deferred and denied so that I have no justice. Know that I know you are all cowards. Know that I know that you have acted um, with impunity to the law with an abhorrent disregard for the human rights charter public officials need to make and commit to in their work and additionally that I see you and you know what I actually have a little bit of compassion for you because as a human rights defender and as capitalism pits person against person, purse against purse, coin against coin, these cowards are only doing a job. And that is, they've got their families. They've got their people to look after, a daughter, a son, a sick granny, whatever. They can't lose their job. The other thing I'm going to donate to is an anti-corruption um, task force. I found it interesting that one of the ministers that um, rejected me, Mark Latham, is going for, from Labor, is going for a um, anti-corruption commission federally. He rejected me. He could have used me as a good example. Anyway, look, this is Rich McLean signing off. I refuse to go to Saltwater Clinic tomorrow and I refuse to be their patient. What's more is I may have legally changed my name, so they can't officially address any letter to me. That is how the law works. I've found that I have to fight the law with the law. Because if I fight with my compassion and kindness and vulnerability, I get slammed. I have been slammed. The time is now. Let's turn this shit situation into something amazing for, for my very human dignity and my dog's brekkie, but also for, for many needy people. And let's not be greedy. Let's share it, you know. Let's sh spread it around. If you feel good and inspired by this little speech I did, which is just about gone for an hour, you can do it. You can be better. Every, like Mother Teresa said, not everyone can do 
great things, but everyone can do little things greatly. It's taken me years to get to this point to even sit here and talk to an hour for an hour so authentically and with such transparency and honesty. I ask you, please, the public, to support me in a simple life while the government comes to their atonement and while I can escape um, being incarcerated for liberal and slander and prejudice when in fact it is a punishment for free thinking. And additionally, um, I'd like the public to support me at killing.info and um, um, what else was I going to say? I forget. Anyway, it's been about an hour. I'll um, sign off now. But, um, oh, th so rounding up, I refuse to go to hospital unless you look at this video. I refuse to be called paranoid. I refuse to be have it called delusions of grandeur, which have already been proven to be absolutely not true. I know who I am. I know what I am. And I know what I'd die for. I wonder if you can say the same thing with pride and virtue and honour. My name is Rich McLean. I've always been a human rights awarded author and artist and advocate. And I've, I'm a difficult person. I'm, I'm triggered by oppression and injustice. And it's true. It comes from my inner child of a non-acknowledged non sexual abuse survivor. Um, anyway, there's plenty more I can go on about, but you can see the evidence at killing.info. I hope by putting this out there tonight, I can um, get a um, adjournment from being locked up. I like my freedom. And you know what? I like food. I deserve food. Everyone deserves food. A lot of people don't get it. Um, and I know how much my undies were worth. I've worn my undies for three days in a row. Once forwards, once backwards, and once inside out. There's one more to go, and then I'll wash them. <laughs> but um, people in positions of privilege and power who can easily exploit and kick the man when he's down don't even know how much their Hermes ties are worth. And that's the great tragedy of the human condition, that one can be born into privilege and look down on other people as if privilege meant they earned it. They didn't. What matters is that we're all in the same storm and some people have yachts, some people have boats, some people are drowning, some people have already drowned, some people have been held under the water and drowned and then they accidentally pop back up and then they're getting, you know, heavy objects thrown at them from the people in the yachts. I'm going to sign off with that um, allegory and metaphor. Trich McLean, please support me and Crystal the dog at killing.info and um, I'll, um, I'll catch you around because um, I'm around. I mean, no one calls me or comes here. But... um. You know, it's not bad being isolated. I've got the dribbles now. <laughs> I should probably go. All right, take it easy. I refuse to go to hospital unless you listen to this. And I refuse to be called paranoid when it's actually a systemic oppression that is happening to me and causing me detriment as a political prisoner and a scapegoat and a character assassinated legend. <laughs> Can you please support me and Crystal? We have nothing. Um, yeah, I can only ask the public's help because I want to give this money back and I want to make a shit thing into something good and I want to continue to support marginalised people and I want to have a simple life free from oppression. That's what it's about for me. Thank you.